Hey guys, welcome back to Wagner's Tech Talk. Today we're going to talk about some enhancements that were made to OpenCade. For instance, you can now create a dual joystick controller for Robotron and Kroll, as well as a large single player control panel with wrist support on the sides. And this will print on most 3D printers. Or how about some custom artwork for your miniature control panel? All this is possible with OpenCade for RetroPie, the expansion pack. Let's get started. I took a lot of the feedback that I received and one of the things that people wanted to see was wrist support. So here you can see we now have wrist support for OpenCade. This works in a one or two player or larger system. You can also have a blank panel if you wish to customize it. This is the large left joystick and right button for a large control panel. And then down at the bottom here, we have the control panel for a dual joystick controller for Robotron. I also enhanced the height here to make it easier for all the cables for the Robotron adapter to fit through. First off, let's go to wagnerstechtalk.com. This is where you're going to find all the files that you need for OpenCade. So we click the OpenCade for RetroPie image and scroll on down. And here we see templates are now available. So let's go ahead and download the template. We'll click the control panel template, extract the files. We'll go ahead and take the Photoshop PSD file and go ahead and load it into Photo Impact, which is the software that I use. And we'll go ahead and size up the template a little bit here. Over on the right hand panel, you see the layers. So you can make it transparent, uh, make it go away, all kinds of pretty cool stuff. All right, so let's get some artwork so we can play around with this, and I'll show you how the the templates could be used to create a customized control panel. So we'll go to images.google.com, we'll search for arcade backgrounds, and we'll just pick something here. It doesn't matter what it is. This is just for demonstration purposes, so we'll grab this one. Copy image. And we'll switch back over to Photo Impact and we'll paste as an object. All right, now I'm holding the control key while zooming in with the little scroll wheel on the mouse. And we'll go ahead and size this up to fit the control panel area. And kind of center it a little bit. There we go, that looks good. All right, now I'll modify the layer here and put the control panel over it so we could take a look. Now we're going to switch over to the Moon Patrol. That's the one I actually printed out myself. I was building this up for a buddy of mine. He loves Moon Patrol. So basically you just cut it out. I use label stock. I'll put links in the description below of the materials that I used. Hopefully you have a better printer than I do, so you can get a nice sharp black output if you're printing this type of artwork out. So just to fix the control panel on top of it. And again, for all of this stuff, if you're not sure how to 3D print this project and so forth, I'll put a link up above where you can go view the first video that describes all of that. This one is just for the expansion pack. All right, so now we're going to take a sheet of laminate. And looks like there's something stuck to the end. What is that? Oh, well, we won't worry about that. All right, so you just stick the control panel on there upside down. Go ahead and trim up all the laminate. Just like so. And I got kind of laminate happy and decided to put another layer of laminate on there just to make sure it's nice and durable and thick and I don't want it peeling on him. 
So we just repeat the same procedure, stick it on there, fold it over. Isn't this exciting? <laughs> it gets more exciting, trust me. All right. Oh, darn it. There we go. All right, so now we trim the edges, fold it over. Looks pretty good. But I noticed the ends look kind of funky. So I brought out the hot air gun. This might work with a hair dryer if it's left on there long enough, but basically I just kind of took the edges and melted the laminate a little bit just to make it mold a little better and so it's not as, you know, sticking out as much. Now here I took an X-Acto blade and just kind of popped through the control panel. This is where your buttons are going to go through. So when I did that, I essentially made little plus signs everywhere. This seemed to make it pretty easy for trimming out all the holes. It's a little bit time consuming, so I'll skip past that so you don't fall asleep on me. All right, so then I just took the joystick and mounted it and a few buttons and we'll go ahead and put the ball on the end of the joystick. And we'll throw another button in just so you can see how that's done. Now, look how nice that looks. Doesn't that look sharp? That well, looks pretty cool. And just screw in the nut. Again, watch the other video for all the details of how to 3D print this stuff and what parts you need. Well, it's really a lot of fun. If you have a 3D printer, you definitely want to Take a look at this if you're into video games, retro video games. All right, the first thing we're going to take a look at is this dual joystick controller. You will notice a slight hump there in the middle. That's because this was an early prototype and, uh, well, I didn't make the hole deep enough, but I did show you early on in the video that I corrected that. Anyway, two joysticks you just open it up and you'll see you have uh, two cables that are going from the joystick to two separate encoders you do need two encoders for this particular project just screw it into the screw holes that are here put one button into each of the encoders so you can use one for select and one for start you'll probably need another controller if you want to be able to uh, navigate the RetroPie menu and notice up here you'll see that hole wasn't deep enough so I took care of that oh there's Pac-Man hello Packy all right so that's what it looks like and yes there's that hump again sorry about that but again this is corrected all the files you download today will have the corrected base with a much deeper notch there for you so we'll go ahead and screw this all in And I'm going to go ahead and try it with the Super Pie, the Super Flag, Super Pie case that I reviewed. I'll put a link up above if you're interested in that. And that's what it looks like. Pretty cool, huh? And there's Robotron. This happens to be one of my favorite games. So I'll go ahead and start one up just so you can see that, hey, it does work. There's a little bit of setup involved in RetroPie, not too much. You just have to map the buttons and you're good to go. That's one of my favorite games. I didn't say I was good at it. <laughs> Now we'll take a look at a large single player control panel. And here you see a one and two player button here on the left hand side. You could configure this however you want if you'd rather those buttons be on the right hand side, which probably would have made a little more sense, but I wanted it on the left for some weird reason. So I put it over there, but you can see the size is really nice. I did not put rubber feet on here, that would have helped stabilize it. but. Anyway, let's take a look at the inside and what I had to do to put this together. One thing you'll notice is the joystick cable here is not long enough, not nearly long enough, 
to go over to the other side. So I ordered another set of cables like this. And then I was like, okay, how do I connect those together? Well, I used some header pins, which fit perfectly in the little connectors. Well, almost perfectly. If I could push it, there we go. All right, they pop in the other one and just clip it right there. And I put electrical tape around it to keep it nice and tight together. I also expanded uh, the wires to the player one, player two. I just cut it, snipped in a little wire, soldered it, and uh, put some shrink tubing over it. And here you can see the two buttons. One, two. Very cool. All right, that's pretty much it. All right, now we're gonna add the wrist support. Here's the front wrist support. You can tell because it says front on the front, or on the back, actually. <laughs> All right, so we take this and we just pop it in like this. It uses the existing screw holes on the base. So you don't have to drill anything. All you need to do is just screw and put nuts in here. That's about it. All right. And on the right and left hand side of this unit, you'll see a screw and a nut. That's what's holding in this side over here. And let me get a better picture of it for you here. This is what it looks like. It just mounts on the side, just like that. And I just put two screws in. I recommend putting in all four. And also you'll notice a little bit of additional support here, right there. That helps keep it nice and stable. That's what it looks like from the other side. You can put a blank plate here or a USB plate, whichever one you want. If you want to allow uh, people to plug in keyboards or other types of devices, you could do that. All right, so let's go ahead and button this thing back down. And we just screw it in. Same thing here. Put a few screws on the bottom or top going down to the bottom, throw a nut on it and tighten that down. Couldn't find my tool. There we go. And we'll do it for this side. Pretty simple. Only two holes here. And then over here, you can secure the left-hand side to the front just by throwing another screw in and another nut. And that's pretty much it. And we'll do the same for the right-hand side with the buttons. And you can join the two together for added stability, which I highly recommend. Just tighten those boogers down. And we'll do the same for the far right side. That's it. Pretty cool, eh? Now we have a large one-player control panel. Of course, you can play two players on many games. It's all how you map the buttons. Just checking out all the buttons. Make sure they all work. Uh, let's check out the joystick. Yep. No stress on anything. We're good to go. I think we are just... Oh, well, there's one other thing I almost forgot to mention. I did add the ability for you to download this, which will give you some suction cups to the bottom of your OpenK. You just E6000 it to the base, and you're good to go. This is what the original OpenK looks like. And this is what it looks like with the expansion pack. I thought it would be a good idea to show you the difference between the two. And you can configure this a number of ways. You don't have to do it just the way I did. You can make a large wrist support on a two-player, like the first one. You can add wrist support to a one-player, a smaller control panel, however you want. Okay, so now I've got the HDMI and the power plugged in. Let's go ahead and give Galaga a try. And we'll go ahead and start it up. Yep, yeah, that's Galaga playing on the open Cade. Pretty cool, huh? 
and you can make this exactly the way you want it. You can add your own custom artwork like I showed you earlier. You could add wrist supports if you want that. You can build it any way you want. If you want to take it a little further, you can create some really cool Galaga custom artwork like this. I did not post this online because I don't own the copyrighted material. And right here, you'll see a glow-in-the-dark PLA, which is pretty cool if you're into glow-in-the-dark PLA. <laughs> I didn't actually wind up using that. Anyway, we got a new video series coming out uh, probably next month that I want to let you know about. It's going to be on virtual reality. So be sure and click subscribe if you want to see more videos. Click that little bell button if you want to be notified. And we shall see you very soon. Talk to you later.